This is by far the best interview that I ever come across on blogging to learn, blogging to build your professional career. Aman is absolutely amazing and because we had some issues with the connection, uh, we start with a joke about the internet in Australia and then we jump straight into the conversation. They say that uh, when you're landing into Australia, so you know Qantas, right? The national carrier. So you say, mm -hmm. when you're landing into Australia, the internet on Qantas is better than Australia itself. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, and based on experience, you know, <laughs> there's some truth to that. Hello, everyone. Today with us, we have uh, Aman Arora, who is an expert blogger. And uh, he wrote some of the best uh, technical blog posts I have ever read. Uh, so on his uh, personal website, he would write about various architectures, about uh, uh, optimizers, about cost functions. And these uh, blogs uh, read really, really well. Uh, he also wrote technical reports for weights and biases. Is that right, Aman? Yes, that's right. Cool. And, and they were also always spectacular. So now that I heard that Aman is planning to go back to blogging, I thought, hey, let me jump on this opportunity and maybe uh, learn a bit more about the magic, how he does the, the things that he does and, and what sort of the magic behind those blog posts. So uh, Aman, you are going back to blogging. Is that correct? Yes, uh, that's right, Radek. So uh, just recently, I announced on Twitter that I'll be going back to blogging uh, once a week. That's my aim is to release a new blog post every Monday at 9 a.m. AEST. Um, so this is starting from the 1st of March. I understand that the 1st of March is not a Monday, but it will be from the first Monday of March. And then I go as long as I can. Beautiful. And what is your motivation behind blogging again? Um, yeah, so uh, the reason why I want to come back to blogging is uh, the motivation is twofold. Uh, the first one is to learn. I know it sounds a bit weird that, oh, you're not the expert and you want to write blogs to learn. Uh, and it's it's that anytime I write a blog, uh, to achieve and to understand completely behind a research paper or say optimizers or UNET. Um, these are different topics in the AI and research world that I covered. And when I had to write a blog, I try and understand it completely. So actually what's happening is because I feel responsible for writing a blog, I spend a lot of my time learning about the particular paper, which I would not otherwise. Sometimes I would just go through the paper or sometimes I would just miss the important details. But when you're writing a blog, I feel responsible. And that's when I go into the details of that paper. And that, that actually helps me learn a lot more. So that's the first motivation is for myself to learn. And the second one is to share and to help people grow. Um, so Radek, as you already know, uh, but for the readers, I started my AI journey with the Fast AI course. And uh, if you haven't heard of the Fast AI course, I know Radek, you you have, <laughs> and everybody is a big fan. And most of uh, my friends or uh, colleagues have started their journeys in AI, thanks to Jeremy Howard and Rachel Thomas and the Fast AI course in general. And what happened was because I learned from people, I learned from online blog posts. I did not, I did not have a college degree or I did not have a master's in uh, computer science or I did not have a PhD. It all started by sitting at home in front of a screen and starting the Fast AI course. So I learned from people. And because that has impacted my life in such a positive way, I have a job. I'm, uh, you know, it's like, it, 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 and now I'm the data scientist lead at realestate.com.au. So I'm leading a small team of data scientists and we're doing excellent work in terms of predicting property prices uh, for all properties across Australia. And it did not happen in a day, it's, it's just over gradually, but it was, the beginning was from the fast AI course. So mm -hmm. I learned from people and my idea or my motivation is to go back and to share it, with, share with people what I know. So anything I learn, I want to share with people so that one of the blogs, perhaps they could be someone else out there reading that blog and it will help them understand that particular topic. That's absolutely beautiful. And uh, so, so essentially you're doing this for your own long-term career prospects, right? Because you're learning in the process and you're also helping others. Uh, I think that's that's exactly what it's all about. All right, so uh, Aman, uh, if you could please tell me 
you know, uh, your, your blog posts have very good pacing. The information just uh, keeps flowing to the reader and, you know, the reader is never bored. How do you achieve this result? This is very different from most of the blog posts out there. Uh, yeah, thanks, Radek. Uh, so the way I, it, it is, um, again, going back to the Fast AI course, I imagine myself as the reader, as that person uh, three years ago or four years ago, who's taking that course for the first time and does not know much about AI, knows the basics, like, okay, here's a train set, here's a validation set, knows the basics. But if there's a research paper in front of me, I I write as if I am that beginner. So I write for that beginner that I was four years ago. Um, and in that way, I can control the pacing of the blog, going into a little bit more details uh, step by step. Um, so if there's a complex talk, topic like vision transformers, or you know, at least for that beginner, which is which is what I think that if I'm taking that fast AI beginner course, then what I do is I provide resources at the at the top of my blog post. And these resources are that if you have not heard of vision transformers, then you want you need some background about attention or it, it's just the basic backgrounds. So go here, read that, and then come back. The idea is that I take my reader on a journey from the beginning to an end. Um, so the beginning being someone who does not know anything about a complex topic such as Vision Transformer. And by the time they finish, uh, they should know everything that's there to know about the Vision Transformer. So it's that journey that I want to take the readers on. And I use tools such as Microsoft Excel or my drawings from the iPad in those blogs as well to help grow step by step. That blog post on Vision Transformers uh, has been absolutely fabulous, brilliant. You know, I I, I absolutely enjoyed it. So um, the approach does work. That's uh, that's that, that's terrific. Uh, and uh, where do you come up with ideas for these blog posts? Yeah, that's an interesting one. Um, I never know myself what I'm writing about next. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> the, it's it's um. It's an interesting one. What happens is, as I'm trying to read something, one blog post leads to 10 other blog posts. Uh, so if I'm learning something, links related to that. So a recent example is, I just recently started learning about stable diffusion. And through stable diffusion, I found five different topics that I want to write about already. So uh, stable diffusion would use clip. Uh, as the text encoder and the image encoder. So I'm, I've started taking the uh, FastAI course again and it's using Clip. Okay, so the one thing I wanna learn about is Clip. So I went back and I started reading the research paper on Clip. Uh, then what happened is I found this brilliant project called OpenClip. So OpenClip, uh, Ross Whitman, uh, the author of Tim, uh, he's also involved in the OpenClip. And then he's written another paper, which is, uh, I believe it was um, scaling laws uh, in, in uh, contrast, uh, contrastive learning. I believe that's the that's one of the papers that has it, that's in the open clip repository. So that's another thing I want to write, write about. There's like a backbone conf next in. You see five different topics that I also want to write about, and this is exactly what happens. So you're finding topics as you go along, essentially as you're learning new things, you find new things to learn and you grow your understanding and also find subjects to write about. That's uh, that's terrific. And this mirrors my experience a lot. You know, when, when I tweet something um, uh, or blog about something, it's also the motivation is usually that I also want to learn in the process. Like spending that much time on a blog post, if I'm not learning, something and it can be maybe learning to write better or learning a technical concept for me it wouldn't feel like time well spent so uh i see something similar on your end and uh, yeah that's uh, that's very interesting uh, so uh aman uh, do you recall when you started blogging what were your beginnings were your blog posts always as good and were, were they always as widely read um <laughs> no, I mean, I, I believe I got lucky as well. Uh, and when I say lucky, I 
picked up a topic at the time. This is um this is back in 2020. So that was my very first blog post in February 2020. So I I had I had just done the 2019 part two fast AI course. And this is when uh, Jeremy makes a call and, you know, how he motivates everyone to uh, write blogs or uh, there's this uh, article by Rachel Thomas that says uh, why you should blog. So that's where I started. <clears throat> and that was my motivation to write my first blog. So I got excited. Okay, I've done my fast AI course. I'm now ready to write a blog. And I picked up uh, the annotated GPT-2. So that was... Uh, an extreme, I, I feel at the time it was a challenging and extremely uh, difficult thing to understand for myself. And I did not know about the others, but for me, it was very difficult because I had just done the fast AI course. And what happened was, uh, it was, and it was beyond my imagination. I'm not kidding, Radek. I was, I I could not believe what had happened. It it was seen by like, it had about 165,000 impressions on Twitter with about, uh, 15,000 engagements and then of which 5,000 people ended up on my blog and signing up. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So this was my very first blog ever. And uh, since then, what happened is that I've, I now have about 150,000 uh, unique users and uh, they're read in about 83 countries, but then that's over three years. But this very first time for someone who's never written a blog before and then decides to write a blog, picks up annotated GPT-2, and then it's seen by one, like it 15,000 clicks and 5,000 people on the blog. Yeah, I was just, it was happy yes. days. I'm like, I'm like I yes. could do this. Is that me? Is that my blog? What are these people? Why are they reading my blog? Those were the thoughts in my head then. Oh, that's that's beautiful, and um, it. So I never achieved uh, such success uh, as you with blogging, but uh, uh, starting to blog as part of the fast AI course has also been very kind to me in a way because you have all these other people from who are taking the course as well, so you naturally get some readers. And you know, my first blog post maybe it got 150 views or something like that. I don't recall now, but you know, just that it it, it is a completely different experience than writing into the void. Like what you describe is is is, is uh, on a completely different level. And uh, yeah, that that's that's absolutely fabulous. Uh, so before that first blog post uh, that you mentioned, did you do any writing uh, earlier on? Yeah, I would write uh, articles here and there on Medium about, say, uh, Random Forest, or there they were different, the couple articles which I would, but never on my blogging website. I never took blogging as seriously as I do now. I almost feel responsible for every blog that I write, but it was never like that then. I was just, like, I was in my uni, and I was learning about things, and I would write an article here and there. Uh, but that that was very different to... To what it is now or to that annotated gpt2 blog post it took months like i remember spending three months on that one blog post wow wow yeah. <laughs> but, but, but the results were definitely worth it and uh, yes uh, because of the multiplication effect that you know so many people get to know you and get to read you maybe investing that time which is a lot of time by all means, but maybe that makes sense actually to to uh, to produce something that is of outstanding quality. Though there is an um, alternate argument that when you were learning, it actually makes a lot of sense to output a high volume of something just to learn in the process, because you know you you learning is an iterative uh, uh, process. Uh, but, but that learning part, uh, I think you did earlier, like you mentioned, with those medium blog posts. So you already knew what you were doing and you said, OK, now let me uh, invest in uh, uh, creating something of high quality and, and it paid off. Um, yes, I think uh, the, there is like for me, it was never about uh, writing something where a lot of readers will read it or it was never with that mindset. It was. It actually took me three months to learn GPT-2. I'm not kidding. It's just that whole time mm. was in learning the code behind it. So I remember going into Hugging Face repository at the time and I copied and pasted their code in my blog. And I do give credit in my blog that the code is from Hugging Face repository. Um, so the 
time was spent, like one week would be spent on the attention uh, paper. And then going by that diagram, it took me like three days just to understand the self-attention diagram. And it, it's just, that's the amount of time that it took me to understand GPT-2 as a whole. And that's when I was writing alongside um, the annotated GPT-2. But it's just that I was, I feel I was really slow and I still am. No, I don't think you are. I think that these things just take time and most people don't talk about this, you know, and GPT-2 is a very complex architecture. There are many ideas and there are also different levels of understanding. Somebody will read the GPT-2 paper and they will say they, they understand it, but they will not, they will not understand it in such a uh, fine detail at the depth that you understand it uh, you understood it to be able to write a blog post uh, like you did. So um, I don't think that three months to understand, uh, you know, GPT-2 is, is a long time. Uh, and also with those more complex topics, we need time to learn them. That's how our mind works, that we learn a chunk and then we sleep on it and it gets integrated into our understanding. So doing something consistently I feel is exactly the right approach. Um, all right. So uh, given your experience and history of blogging, what would be your advice for somebody just starting out? Um, thanks, Radek. You, uh, it, it's, you make me look like the expert and I'm excited about this, but also like... Because you are, you know, you <laughs> are. You just, you just, hey, here I am leading this uh, team at a... Uh, very large and successful um, company and you don't see yourself as an expert you know that I, I can relate to that on a very deep level so if I have a mission in life I want to go through the world and just put this large mirror in front of people and you know yeah you know look at yourself you are the expert you are absolutely amazing Aman, in, in the stuff that you do so uh, big kudos to you. Oh, thank you Radek you're, you're very kind uh, thank you so much. Um... <laughs> Okay, coming uh, coming back to uh, advice, uh, and it's actually the advice I give myself. I, I I spend some of my time in a day listening to a motivational video or to a motivational speaker uh, to get myself kickstarted. So if I go for a run in the morning, and uh, one of the uh, persons I listen to a lot is Les Brown, and he said something that has stayed with me is that uh, you are never too old to learn and you are never too young to share. So that's that, that that's that's something like you're never too young to teach uh, is something I feel is absolutely true when it comes to blogging. We put these mental blocks in front of us that I do not have a PhD. I have never written a paper before. I do not have a master's in IT. Who am I? Like these were the thoughts. I'm I'm just someone who's going through a course online, sitting at home, and I've spent two months learning about random forest. Why would anyone want to read about me or read something I write? But that's actually not the case. It's there's always going to be someone in a journey that's slightly behind you than where you are today. There might be someone who is starting the AI journey who. Uh, or who's from like, say, uh, he's a medical doctor and someone wants to get started with deep learning. So right for them, there's, there's always going to be more people you can help along the way as you learn. And that is my advice uh, to someone who's planning of starting a blog. Please do, because you're in a position to help other people. That is a wonderful piece of advice. And I love the phrasing that you're never too old to learn something and you're never too young to share that's that uh, I will remember this. Thank you very much. This, this is this is this uh, is spot on. Um, okay, uh, beautiful. So, uh, uh, Aman, th thank you so much for sharing all these insights. Uh, I definitely learned a lot. And if you could please tell us where we can find you. Yeah. Um, firstly, I want to say thanks, Radic, for having me. I've uh, I've been a huge fan of your work, your Kaggle starters, and now you're at NVIDIA. So, um, you know, it's just finally meeting someone on video. Uh, like I've, I've, I, I was saying before, it's like I've seen your tweets and we've 
shared each other's work or we've appreciated the work uh, you've you've mentioned on my blog post that I did, and then I've replied on your cackle posts or cackle starters, and um, it's just very satisfying to finally meet you. So thank you for having me on on no the show, course. and uh, I'm I'm active on Twitter. Uh, so my uh, Twitter handle is uh, at a m a a r o r a. So I just skip the n in my first name and last name. So you just join them together, and that's the same for my GitHub. And then even my uh, website is again the same acronym. Dot GitHub. Dot so, uh, I I link to it all from the description. Uh, so please check it out. And you mentioned that you can subscribe to your blog. Is that correct? Yeah. Yes, uh, so yes. You have there's a, a newsletter on my blog. A newsletter, beautiful. So uh, uh, do stay tuned for that as well. Uh, sign up to, uh, you know, to, to be in touch with Aman, with uh, what he's up to, his uh, uh, undertakings. Uh, Aman, uh, best of luck with the blogging adventure that you're restarting. Blogging uh, once a week, that is a very tough uh, cadence but uh, you know fingers crossed I'm, I'm definitely looking forward and, and can't wait to read your things thank you so much Radek and uh, thanks for having me thanks so much bye bye